Hello! In today's video, we're going to be working on the caterpillar exercise. And this video is really designed for anybody who's looking to find a good warm up routine for their ukulele playing, or maybe they're just looking for some more exercises to up their game with finger style ukulele playing. Now, we're going to be breaking this down into three different levels for the complete beginner all the way to a more advanced version that I still use in my playing to this day. So, let's go ahead and dive into this caterpillar exercise. Now, so that you can see it, I'm going to do the advanced one just so that you can hear what we're working towards. It eventually will sound something like this. And we repeat for each string, you get kind of the gist. Now this technique is really awesome because it teaches your hands to work together, which is a really important skill for brand new ukulele players as well as more advanced players to really build that relationship. The beginner version of this technique looks something like this. for an awesome warm-up routine to just get your fingers loose. Now to play this, what we're going to do is we're going to be using a technique that's called a rest stroke. And that just means we're going to be plucking with our thumb. If you've never plucked with your thumb before, there's a video link down below and up in the card over here that you can check out and watch um, and come back to. But if you're comfortable plucking with your thumb, that's what your playing hand's going to be doing. With your fretting hand, what you're going to do is, well, you're going to play your open A string to start. And then you're going to take your index finger and place it on the first fret of the A string. A really important key with this technique is that you have really good fretting habits, which means don't have that finger back in the fret or even in the middle. Get it right up next to that fret wire without coming over. And that's a really critical thing that we're developing with this. More on that in a moment. But after I play one, I then add the middle finger on two. Again, right up next to that fret wire. Ring finger on three. Pinky on four. Notice how I'm leaving the fingers on. I'm not taking one finger off when I'm applying the next. That's a really important step. After I go to the fourth fret, what I'm going to do is then I'm going to play the fourth fret again here. And then I'm going to strip away the pinky, strip away the ring after that, strip away the middle, and finally the index. So essentially, I'm playing open one, two, three, four. Then I'm playing four, three, two, one. Zero. I'm getting comfortable with each finger being added and then each finger being removed. So let's go ahead and try this together a couple times. We're just playing open one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, zero. One more time. Zero, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, zero. If you've never done anything like this before, this can be very challenging and that's okay. And this is the level one to be working on. If you find this challenging, continue working on it. As you get comfortable with the first string there, you go and go to the next string, the next and the next. One of the tricks to this is getting comfortable across all four strings. So let's go and try it now on our E string, which is the second one from the bottom here. We're gonna play open, then one, two, three, and four. Same exact thing we did last time. But one little thing that I want you to work on is keeping your fingers nice and flat with this technique. You know, when we're playing chord melody style, a lot of times we want to make sure that we're keeping our fingers bent so that all the different strings can ring. But in this particular case, we're only trying to articulate one string. So it's okay for these fingers to be a little bit flatter, which makes it a lot more efficient and effective to build up speed as you go through. But you can see it's essentially the same thing going on the E string. If I do it on the C string, same thing again, you'll see the fingers are a little bit flatter yet, just because I'm now coming all the way up to that C string. And finally, on the G string, if you're playing a low G ukulele, it still works. It's just going to sound lower than me playing it on my high G ukulele. And what's so great about this is you can just jump from string to string. It doesn't matter what order you do the strings. It's just starting to get these hands comfortable playing together and being able to fret things, 
kind of take them off. In fact, one thing I like to do is jump around with the strings. So maybe you do your A and then you jump to your C. And then maybe your E. And then your G. It doesn't really matter the order. As long as you're getting comfortable with these two hands starting to work together, adding frets, and then stripping them away. And that creates the level one of this, which if you're a more advanced player, this might be a little bit boring, but still a good thing to kind of practice just to make sure that you're comfortable adding fingers on and then removing them. Going into the level two here, level two and three are actually kind of the same thing. It's just how far up the neck we're going. With level two, we're just going to introduce one little element of pivot. And this makes it really difficult if you've never done it before, but also really fulfilling and how this can really become a great warm up exercise for your playing. So what it looks like, well, let's go and start on the A string again. I'm gonna play open, then one, two, three, four. So exactly the same as what I did before. But now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this index finger, I'm gonna slide it up one, fret to the second fret and take the other three fingers off as sort of one motion. So it goes zero, one, two, three, four, slide up and then play that two at that time that slide up. So it looks like. So go ahead and try this with me. We're playing just zero, one, two, three, four, slide up to two and play it. We don't want to delay in there. You don't want to do this. Hear that gap? We want it very even. And what we do is once we've moved up to that two, we then play three, four, and five with the fingers in the same way we did before on one, two, three, four, stacking the fingers one at a time. But this time we're stacking two, three, four, and five. Now once we're up here at five, we're going to go back down. We're gonna play the five again, then we're gonna play four, then three, then two. And we're gonna keep going down, but what we're going to do now is we're going to, instead of being at five, four, three, two, we're gonna take our pinky and we're gonna put it at four. And we're gonna play that. And as we do that, we're going to bring our other fingers into position so that we can go four, three, two, one, all the way to the zero. So if you're confused right now, that's okay. We're gonna break this, break this down a few different ways. But basically what you're doing is you're starting on the open string and then you're playing one, two, three, four. And then you're pivoting all of these fingers up one fret and playing each one of those. Two, three, four, five. And then we're going to go back down. So we're going to go five, four, three, two. And then we're going to go down to four, three, two, one. And then we play zero to finish it. So here's what it looks like really slow. If you feel up for it, go ahead and try practicing it with me. I'll say the numbers as we're going. It's going to be zero, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five. Down, five, four, three, two, four, three, two, one, zero. And if you listen to this, You can hear it's this nice, what we call chromatic movement, which really just means kind of moving one fret at a time, where we start to really incorporate this one finger per fret concept. You see how each finger kind of has its own fret, and then the responsibility of those fingers changes as you move up. And that sort of crossing up and then crossing back down is so important to develop that that familiarity and that dexterity with our fretting hand, and it is tough if you haven't done it before. And after we've done it on the A string, we then move to the E string, same deal. Same on the C as well. is really the basis of this caterpillar movement and it's called the caterpillar exercise because my fingers kind of look like a caterpillar walking 
as I do that. And you'll see more of that on the advanced level as well. But this intermediate level is actually, it's, it's quite hard if you haven't done this before. But crossing the fingers, being able to kind of move up and then I think more importantly, move back down. Feels like a finger twister, you know, seashell, she sells seashells by the seashore, can't even say it right the first time. It's like that, but for your fingers with your ukulele playing. And it's a wonderful, wonderful warm up routine to get comfortable with getting those fingers on the fretboard. Now, when you're comfortable with that level two, level three is just the same thing as level two, only dialed up to 12. <laughs> and what I mean by that is what we were doing with level one was we just played the first four frets and moved back then, right? With level two, we played the first four and then we moved up to get to five and then we moved back down. So we introduced one element of movement. With level three, you're going to keep going all the way. And ideally, you'll eventually go all the way up to fret 12 and then back down. The way this looks is you go one fret at a time, one finger per fret. So we start at zero. I'm doing my A string again. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. Then I'm gonna pivot up one, right? So index finger goes from one to now two, two, three, four, five, keeping one finger per fret. And I'm gonna go up again. I'm gonna go three, four, five, six. And then I'm gonna go four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine. 7, 8, 9, 10, 8, 9, 10, 11, 9, 10, 11, 12. And that's where I usually like to stop. Now you don't have to move all the way to 12, jumping from the level two to level three of this warm up exercise. You could go up to seven or 10, doesn't really matter. 12 is kind of the target eventually. And you could even go up higher if you wanted to, but 12's a really good place to kind of stop with this. And so I'm doing one finger per fret, pivoting up one at a time moving all the way until my pinky finger hits fret 12 on the A string. And that looks something like this. Again, make sure everything is very even with this. You want to make sure there is no delay as you're walking up. And remember earlier when I talked about the fretting habits, you want to make sure you're getting right next to that fret wire. It's going to give you the consistency of the tone. And after you've walked all the way up to 12 like this, your fingers are nice and squeezed together, which is another element of the difficulty of this and why it's such a great warm up. You're then going to do the hard part, which is going back down. And the way that we do this is we play the pinky on 12, then we go 11, 10, 9, stripping away one finger per, per note. And then I'm going to move to 11. My pinky finger is going to move over here, and then I'm going to kind of squish down and go 11, 10, 9, 8. As I do this, I'm trying to keep these fingers nice and narrow to the fretboard. I don't want to be going like that because that's too inefficient. So I kind of set them in place. And I continue doing this process all the way down. Each time the pinky is just moving down one fret and kind of reassigning the other fingers to be one finger per fret as it moves up and down the fretboard. And it looks something like this nice and slow. Feel free to practice along if you want. If that's a bit overwhelming, don't worry about it. It's okay to just watch and listen. And I'll say the numbers as we do it. Zero, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, nine, ten, eleven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Going back down, 12, 11, 10, 9, 11, 10, 9, 8, 10, 9, 8, 7, 9, 8, 7, 6, 8, 7, 6, 5, 7, 6, 5, 4, 6, 5, 4, 3, 5, 4, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. It's actually harder to say it than it is to play it in some ways. But you can really see how it's called the caterpillar exercise when we're going down with this. Just look at my fingers here. See how they look like a caterpillar walking? It's kind of cool, right? And then from there, after you do it with your A string, you do it with your E string. Back down. So on and so forth with your C string and then with your G string and that's you know, a big ask when you first learn this. It's okay to maybe just do it on one string per warm up routine. As you build comfort with it, you can eventually move to all four strings. But the reason I like this exercise so much is it really teaches the relationship of these hands to work together.
If you try to pluck it faster than you can fret it, it's going to fall apart. So you want to make sure you practice this at a very metered pace so that you're able to kind of keep up. In fact, if you've been looking to introduce a metronome in your practice, I know metronomes, right? Scary word. But this is like the best first thing to practice with a metronome because you can sit there and have it on a click, 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 and play with each one of those clicks. Click. Even if you're just doing the level one up to fret four there and back down, that's such a great way to start incorporating that metronome into your practice. As you get faster, click, 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 three different levels that you can break down and you can try to incorporate it in your playing and see where it fits within your warm-up routine and exercises. A quick story with this technique, I actually learned this from a man named Music Guy Mike, who was an ukulele salesman who left this world much too soon, and he made a post probably 15 years ago or so on Ukulele Underground and said, hey, whoever can do this technique the fastest uh, will win an ukulele. And I was thinking, oh yeah, I'm, I'm pretty fast at ukulele playing. Yeah, I'll, I'll win this for sure. Let me, let me learn this thing. Okay, so I play it like that. And I sat there, watched music. I might go up and down really quick. And I was like, yeah, I got this. And I was like, uh-oh, oh, this is hard. <laughs> and it was one of the most humbling moments of my ukulele, ukulele playing life because I realized, wow, I am not good at this movement. And sure enough, learning this technique and then using it and teaching with it has made my relationship between these two hands much much better and that dexterity translates to when you're playing chord melody and other styles of playing solos scales all of that all stems from this type of playing so as always if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in comments below i try to take a look at any comments here on the youtube channel and uh, if you haven't checked it out already please look at my patreon page where i make lessons every month based on the suggestions of my patrons and it's really thanks to all of my patrons i'm able to make videos just like this one so if you are a patron thank you so much for the support i so appreciate it and i'll look forward to seeing you guys next time on the next video here so thanks again take it easy good luck with the caterpillar Work on it and you'll become a beautiful butterfly or something. I don't know. Take it easy, guys.